Capital Region Sports Saturday, brought to you by Mohawk Honda, your number one volume dealer in the Capital Region. On the phone right now, Bob Stelton, host ESPN 710 in Seattle, host of the Bob, Graz, and Tom Show. And and Bob, Ken Griffey Jr., elected for induction into the Baseball Hall of Fame, 99.3% of the vote, 437 out of 440 possible votes, highest total ever, highest percentage ever. What was your reaction on hearing that news? Uh, you know what? To be honest, I was a little disappointed <laughs> because as, uh, as I watched the vote tally and I was following a guy on Twitter that, that actually shows you kind of an up-to-the-minute uh, count on the votes. He had been 100% through 215 ballots or so, which is less than half. But, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't think of a logical reason anybody could present as to why they wouldn't put him on their ballot. So I figured, all right, if there's ever going to be somebody that gets a unanimous vote, this is it. And he almost did. So there's the part of me, the Seattle fan, the guy that grew up watching him and covering him, that was ecstatic that he is the highest uh, vote getter in terms of percentage. But I'm still bothered, and I probably shouldn't be, but it still really annoys me that there were three people that somehow, some way, found a reason to omit him from their ballot. I grew up in Seattle as well, and I get frequent grief here in Albany for talking about Seattle at the rate that I do around the office. You got to cover Junior in his prime. You got to see him every single night. What was that like, just going to the Kingdom and then for a little while, Safeco Field, just seeing Junior every given night? You know, it was uh, it, it was interesting because he was he was already an established star when I got into the business. He, they were still in the Kingdom, so I grew up. He was my hero. He was he was the guy I marveled at. He was the guy I looked at and said, "This is the greatest player in the game right now." And then to be in a position where I was standing in front of him in a, in a clubhouse was intimidating. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, so it was, it was one of those things when I first started going in there, our direction was you stand there with a microphone and don't say a word, don't ask a question, just get sound. And I would stand there with a mic as other reporters ask questions. And if he had made eye contact with me, I'd look down at the ground. I mean, I was just, you know, I was that in awe of him. And then it, obviously it changed over time as I was in there more often and became a host and things like that. You start talking to the guy. And, you know, what's what's unique, and I'm sure you, you get this as well, is you, you sort of, I won't say become jaded, you become numb to being around athletes and the things they do. And, yeah, you can, you can marvel at them and recognize them. But, you know, it takes a lot for you to go, that is special. That is something unique. That is something you just don't see. And that was what you, you felt with Junior. And it didn't matter whether it was standing behind the batting cage as he was going through batting practice or in the middle of a game, you would watch him. And he was the reason to watch the Mariners for a long time. They had a lot of bad teams, as you know. So he was he was the main reason to watch, and he was must-watch. You would drop what you were doing as soon as he stepped up to the plate and then go back about your business. Bob Stelton, ESPN 710 in Seattle, with us on Capital Region Sports Saturday, brought to you by Mohawk Honda. And, Bob, Cooperstown is an amazing place. It's my favorite place to be, that along with Seattle. And I'm going to be at induction weekend, July 22nd to the 25th. What is the Seattle contingent going to look like in Cooperstown? How is Seattle going to travel for Junior? You know, that, that's an interesting question, and it's hard to say. I would imagine it's going to be very, very prominent, you know, in terms of a Seattle presence out there. This is... You know, with all due respect to Gary Payton and Steve Largent and even now today, Russell Wilson, Marshawn Lynch, any superstar you can think of in Seattle, Lenny Wilkins, if you want to go back, uh, he is by far and away the biggest superstar in the history of this town, in any sport. Uh, so he, he just holds a different place with people, and now he's the first Mariner to go into the Hall of Fame. But, you know, with all due respect to Dave, the great Dave Niehaus, he went into the broadcasting wing. But this is the first player. Randy Randy Johnson goes in as an Arizona Diamondback. This is the first Seattle Mariner. So it was the first megastar to come out of Seattle. It's now the first Hall of Famer to come out of Seattle. And Seattle, as you know, has a very strong attachment, a very personal relationship with Ken Griffey Jr. So I would imagine that it's going to be a very, very prominent uh, presence out there. Is there a moment... In, in Junior's career that stands out to you where you're like, you know what, when I think of Junior, this is the moment that I think of. This is what made him so great. Man, you know, I've been asked that question a few times now, and it is so hard to nail down one moment. I mean, there are the moments we all see in replays, right? They're, they're, it's him rounding the bases in 95 and sliding in home, sliding safe at home against the Yankees, and the team is mobbing him, and he's on the bottom of that tile, uh, you know, smiling that 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 smile that everybody came to know that just showed you how much joy he had when he played this game. Um, that, for me, is the most indelible moment. You know, the beating, that was a huge, 
huge time here in Seattle, and to have him be the guy that goes from first to home on the Edgar Double, it's just it was just an amazing moment, and this town absolutely exploded. But you know, him hitting the home run in eight consecutive games, the, the Spider Man catch against the wall against Jesse Barfield, the other catch against the wall where he, he made the catch and broke his wrist in a game where Randy Johnson uh, was pitching. Uh, it was just, it, it just he he had so many highlight moments. But I, I think rounding the bases on the Edgar Double, sliding it home, is is for me the one that you just you you is so clear. It's like it happened yesterday. I think the thing that makes Junior's story so unique too, and really separates him from other guys in the Hall of Fame or other Hall of Fame candidates, is that he helped save baseball in the city of Seattle. The Mariners don't exist if Ken Griffey Junior. doesn't play for them, right? Oh, you're you're at, you're one hundred percent right. I mean, this town was on its way, or this team, I should say, I'm sorry, it was on its way to Tampa Bay. And that that magical run in 95 and Junior being the catalyst of that uh, is what turned things around and got momentum here in the Seattle area going in terms of, you know, funding a new stadium and getting this team in a position to stay here. If Junior's not on this team, Seattle, the Seattle Mariners don't exist. I mean, they are in Tampa, they are the Tampa Bay Rays right now. And who knows what would have happened if an expansion team would have come here or whatever. But that version of the Seattle Mariners would have been gone. That city, that stadium is the stadium that Griffey built. I mean, with all due respect to every other player, Jay Buhner, Edgar Martinez, Randy Johnson, they all played a part without question. But Ken Griffey Jr., is, is if you wanted to give you know a little pie chart of, of credit for why this team is still here and why Safeco Field is there, he would have the biggest slice. Bob Stelton, ESPN 710 in Seattle, breaking down Ken Griffey Jr., his election for induction into the Hall of Fame at Cooperstown coming up this summer. Bob, Tom, and Graz is the show every day on 710. Bob, thanks for being with us. You got it. Anytime, man.